it, it, there's been a recession in the uh, like the trucking industry and in the in the, in the multimodal industry, where there's been a drop actually in some of those types of uh, volumes. Yeah, volumes overall for a lot of manufacturers and shippers have decreased year over year. Um, and that has to do with a lot of different things, you know, like consumer spending, the rise of e-commerce and the, I would say the rise of like final mile deliveries and customers expectations of needing fast and reliable service has escalated higher than it ever has. Um, and then you add in, you know, labor shortages, issues with the infrastructure, bottlenecks at the ports. It's kind of created this like ball of momentum, negative momentum, I guess you could say that normally the market would have kind of started flipping well long ago. Uh, that's not a phrase. A long time ago. Um, and that's what we're seeing right now. It's kind of a new a new market we're in with all of these things kind of happening at once. And I think a lot of people in the industry are, are looking at what is going to be the next model in our industry in brokerages, freight forwarders, um, asset companies, and how we're going to sustain kind of the new normal in our market. It was costing more than they were making kind of a deal. <clears throat> exactly. Yep. And so, you know, kind of similar with Convoy and not having the proper structure and forecasting in their organization and then their operating ratios being so extremely high, it just kind of, it'll cause a lot of issues, obviously could lead to bankruptcy if it gets too bad. So that's why right now, a lot of companies are trying to figure out, okay, what's next? If the market stays like it is right now, we need to figure out how to stay profitable and how to keep operating and still grow and scale to where they want to be. So, and that's where tech automation and then, um, you know, looking at outsourcing or nearshoring your talent so that you're able to, again, keep the revenue generators in the United States making money, making the company money, but then they're all supported by either technology that's automated or, you know, people that are, that are more cost effective in other areas of the world um, to facilitate that. And I think that is kind of the next chapter in our, in the transportation, in the book of transportation, um, is how now are we going to manage this new normal? And I think a lot of shippers, a lot of these big, um, you know, your, again, your Niagara, your, your massive shippers that have over a billion dollar freight spend, they're also looking at, how they're going to operate with, you know, the new models that carriers and brokerages are implementing. What would you recommend that they, you know, somebody needs to take into account based on this new business model you're talking through here of what the struggles and, and all of that, that the current uh, service providers are facing. If I am looking to say I need to, you know, secure some contracts with some transportation companies, what is it that, from my perspective, would you recommend that I need to be looking for in in dealing with somebody before I sign on to a contract? You know, there's a couple different things. I would say it does depend on the nature of the freight. So, is it high touch freight that needs a lot of attention and kind of like a control tower of operations or can it, can you just book it and kind of let it sit? Um, so for me, I think understanding the company's financial health, understanding their initiatives for moving forward and how, like if, if I was a shipper, I would ask my carriers, like, how are you guys planning for the future? What are you guys doing to adjust to the market and stay profitable still. Cause as a, as a business, you always want the other business you're working with to still be profitable because otherwise it's not going to be a good partnership. You know, there has to be wins for both sides. And, um, it's also really important still in my opinion to have those relationships. 
And our industry is so old school that I think it's going to be a long time before those relationships really go away. And you see kind of a debate between digital freight brokerages versus traditional freight brokerage models, where it's one is like a no touch, no humans really involved. And the other is very relationship based. And a lot of the opportunity in our industry still comes from building those relationships, building up that credibility and trust so that the shipper knows that if you if he, he or she gives you a contract that and honor the commitment. Because there is, you know, when you when you agree to that, yes, it's a contract, but a lot of carriers will just give back loads, give back their freight, and then the shipper is left stranded without any um without any any backup plan. So and that's why a lot of these large shippers don't really love working with uh brokerages because a broker doesn't have full control over that carrier. You know, it's a it's a we're a matching service basically. So making sure they are doing a good job vetting their carriers and their insurance is up to date, their authorities are in place because it could put the shipper had a lot of liability. Um, and that's another big issue in our industry is theft, fraud, a lot of stolen loads. There's a lot of this going on and it's it's um, not great. Yeah, but the trade-off though is dealing with a brokerage firm. They're able to source out to multiple things. If you want to take that in in-house and you're going directly to the asset company, that's fine. But now you're going to have to keep up with all the different locations and try and make those contacts. I mean, you, the, the trade-off there is a brokerage firm already has the the relationship with so many different carriers across the, the board. That's where I, I caution people. Be careful of being penny-wise and pound-foolish. Yes, you can go directly to some of these companies and get a better rate or whatever the case is for a specific lane. But then the trade-off is, oh, well, that company doesn't run on this lane route that I need to take. Now I've got to spend my time to go check somebody out or heck, hence you go back to a broker's first. Let us let me shift gears here. What about from a transportation side, a, a service provider? Let me put it that way. That would be, you know, say a brokerage firm is one, but then the other is the the actual asset company, as you were talking about. From their perspective, what should they be doing? I mean, I've seen a lot where the chain the the of most recent people have pretty much stopped trying to, if you will, buy the business, as you say, going in low and just say basically, um, you know, here's what I've got to have, or here's what my rate is, and they won't go but down any lower. And and people try and beat them down, but they, in my opinion, have to be prepared. You're gonna have to walk away from that business if they're saying, "Well, you know, my rates, you know, a dollar, and no, I want seventy five cents." It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I would say, um, and again, I'm working with a lot of great companies. So I'm talking every day with CEOs trying to figure out what they're doing, what their plans are. And I think the gap is not understanding your operational costs. And so whenever I kind of consult with companies, I I ask them like, what is your cost per load? If they can tell me and, and they understand their cost per load, how much it takes from start to finish, um, then usually they have a pretty good grasp on their operations. But I think, again, that is a gap. These companies are not understanding how much overhead they have and how to get new business that actually works for the shipper partners. So when I um, I was always in sales at my transition companies. Consistency is what, it, what I'm hearing you say is basically... A company needs to take and, and identify what their strengths are and then leverage that for the business on the, that particular area rather than trying to be the jack of all trades. I had shipper partners all the time say, tell me, if you bid on more than 20 lanes, we just we don't even look at it. We throw it away. So um, I think it's really important to be very strategic because, again, we want to come in as a partner and not just like and it has to be a win for both people. So. Yeah, I always put myself in the other person's shoes. Well, here instead, this is a real partnership and this is, you know, going to be long term. I'm not just offering you rates 
for the first year. And then we're going to jack our prices up because we have to recoup everything we lost in the last year. Now it's more like, um, here's a strategic partnership and we want to work with you to understand your operations and figure out how we can provide the best solution, which is, again, like the strategic partnerships with the carriers. And it all starts with with the um, carrier reps as well, being able to understand their carrier's uh, strengths and their modes, you know, and um, I worked at a company and we always said, work trucks, not loads. So instead of every time there's a load on the board, you work it with a one-off carrier. Well, no, no, no. Let's instead work the carrier and go to the carrier. What do you need? What are your main lanes? Where can I help you get to? You know, maybe they need to go home every Wednesday for their son's basketball game. Okay, if they have a broker that's like thinking about those things and helping them kind of plan out their weeks and be the dispatcher, if you may, for these asset companies and be the salespeople for them, that obviously then creates that buy in for the carrier and they want to keep your business because now they have a cheerleader for you that's like helping them. You know, ha- one, make money, two, ha- have consistent volume, and three, help them get home or do whatever they need to do. So those carriers are going to be able to provide better service. And again, then the customer is going to be happy because they're getting a competitive rate and service and capacity. Mm-hmm.